Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And we're in our fourth week of our series, Our New Identity. We're uncovering what this new identification in Christ looks like. For what purpose? So that we can accept our new photo ID that God's given to all of us. You know, God did something so brand new. He created a whole new person in the new birth in our spirits. But you know what? He also gave us a whole new identity, a whole new photo ID or a picture ID, so to speak. And that is painted in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. You know, and as we begin to look through and read through the New Covenant, and we run across that phrase, in Him, in Christ, in whom, or something along that line, there's over 130 of them in the New Testament. We need to really take note of that because what He is telling us, He is he is giving us what our new photo ID looks like, what our new identity in Christ looks like. We, he's actually describing what the new birth created in our spirits. This is how we look. And of course, it's all in Christ. Our new identification in Christ makes us look just like our big brother, the firstborn among many brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And of course, we need to know that. Now again, when we're, we're talking about these things, we're not talking about becoming more born again or more of a new creation. Uh, no, what we're talking about, because that's already complete. That, that, that part of your salvation is already done and complete in your spirit. But in your own mind, you may not be seeing things according to the way God sees you in the spirit. And of course, in your heart, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we need to renovate the way we see ourselves in our own minds and heart according to who we are, what we have in Christ, this new picture ID that God has given to all of us, and that is what we're going by now. We don't look like the first Adam anymore by any stretch of the imagination. We don't have any identification, association, ties or roots within Him any longer. Thank God. You know, we're a whole different person in Christ. And again, we look so much better in Jesus than we used to do in the first Adam. Now, I want to go back to the book of Colossians again today. Book of Colossians chapter 2. We began reading this yesterday, but we're going to go back over here again today and read verse 6 and 7. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 reads this way. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Well, again, how did we receive Christ Jesus the Lord? By faith. You don't leave your faith at the front door when you get in to this new birth experience that we're talking about. Nope. You're to be walking in Him, in our identification in Christ, by the same method and means, which is by faith. Then in verse 7 it says, Rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now notice again, he says, rooted and built up in him. Now again, uh, what he's talking about referring to here is accepting this new identity that we have in Christ. Beginning to see ourselves in our hearts the way God sees us. And of course, the way God sees us is the way it really is. That's the way he created us in our spirit. So he says, rooted and built up in him. In other words, we are to continually be rooted and built up in our identification in Christ Jesus. Now we pointed out yesterday that word build up is also found in Acts chapter 20 verse 32 and Paul commended to those disciples there and he says I commend you to the word of his grace. Now what is that? That's the gospel of Jesus. The word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now notice right there that doesn't mean that we're earning it. That doesn't mean that we're trying to become it. We already are in our spirits, but what the word of his grace does is renew our minds, renovate our hearts, and build us up so that we, our life externally, is reflecting what's internal. That our, what, the image that we have of ourselves, the way we see ourselves, the way we see God, the way we see others, the way we view life and interpret life's events in our life, is directly in line with the Word of God, the Word of His grace. Now notice that this, this gospel, the Word of His grace, is building us up. Our Seeing ourselves in Christ builds us up. It doesn't tear us down. 
I tell you, if if you're hearing a message that that somebody said this is the gospel and it's constantly feeding you condemnation, guilt, and shame, is is really telling you who you are outside of Christ and and basically separating you from Jesus. That is not the gospel, and that's not word the word of His grace at all. No, the word of His grace is always going to in your own heart see you totally united in and with Christ seeing yourself totally in him identified in him in every way like him in every way again we quote this all the time on these uh, podcasts but first John chapter 4 verse 17 says as he is as Jesus is so are we right now in this world now we're not trying to be, not going to be, not hope to be. No, it says we are right now. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Well, see, that's already the way it is in your spirit. But for the most part, in our hearts, that's not the way we see ourselves. We see ourselves many times outside of Christ, separated away from Him, not identified with Him. And because we're still kind of holding on and retaining the, uh, the old identities of the old man in the first Adam. Well, that person is dead and gone. We read it earlier in this week, Romans 6.6, 6, the Riker translation says our former evil identities have been executed. When, we, when did that happen? When Jesus died on the cross, when he was crucified, we died with him. In other words, we don't see ourselves outside of Christ, we see ourselves in, in Christ totally identified with him in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. I tell you, we are one with him. And that's what he's referring to right here, rooted and built up in him. And notice, and established in the faith. As you have been taught, notice we, this is what we should be, should be being taught, is the word of his grace, the gospel, the, the revelation of our identification in Christ. And notice his effects, we're built up and we're established in the faith. We're built up and we're established in the faith. When it talks about or refers to the faith, it's talking about the whole concept of righteousness by faith or justification by faith, being right with God by faith. Now I'm gonna look at this uh, down the road in a couple of weeks or so, but that, that term and, and that word righteousness really what that means because a lot of times people are thinking righteousness when you're talking about righteous and righteousness you you people automatically think religious good works well good works are included or fruit of good works are included in righteousness that concept but that's not the root of it that's not where it starts righteousness really means to be right with god and really, in this term, in, in New Testament terminology, that means you are in Christ. You're one with Him. You're in union with Him. You can't be any more right with God than you are in Christ. I'll tell you what, that identification with Christ is going to reveal to us that we're right with God. What does that mean exactly? Well, I won't get into it a great deal because we're going to look at it in future lessons. But righteousness means that we've been forgiven and cleansed of all sin just like it never even happened see that's what the death burial resurrection of Jesus and what his blood did for us that it completely cleansed and forgave sin there's no trace of it that's why there is no condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus Romans 8 1 because God no longer remembers our sin why does he not remember our sin anymore is he uh, you know, it's been so many years that he's come short of memory here about these things. No, he remembers the finished work and the shed blood of Jesus. And because he's focused on that, because he's, his whole attention is on that, because he's accepted the finished work of Jesus as the payment for our sin, that means they're completely forgiven and wiped out like they never even happened as far as he's concerned. He doesn't look at us in sin. He doesn't look at us outside of Christ. He doesn't look at us as unrighteous beings anymore. He looks at us as blameless and holy in his own sight. That's what the Word of God declares. So there's many other things that we're going to look at that in that term righteousness, but when he's referring to being established in the faith, he's referring to the the concept, the, the, the whole uh, reality 
of justification or righteousness by faith. And of course, there's a lot of branches off of that tree right there. You can kind of look at it this way, that righteousness, the righteousness or justification by faith is the trunk on the tree. But there's a lot of branches that are, that are attached to that trunk that are heading off and bearing fruit. And we're going to look at those down the road because that is so important. And you, I tell you, you're, you'll see yourself that way in Christ when we get through with this. So notice that it says that we are to be established in the faith. He just doesn't want us to be um, just acquainted with this, uh, with the faith, or just have, you know, just a, a little bit of an, an experience with the faith. He wants us to be established in the faith. Now, where does this become established? Well, it becomes established in our own heart. You know, there's, there's a couple of different things that we are to be established in in our hearts in the New Covenant. Uh, Isaiah chapter 54, which is basically a prophecy concerning New Covenant living, the day that we're living right now, it says in verse 13 and 14 that we're, be, we're to be established in righteousness. We're to be established in righteousness. And then uh, Hebrews chapter, I think it's 13, 12 or 13, it says that our hearts need to be established in grace. Why? Because the word of his grace is what builds us up. That's what he's talking about, which is the word of his grace is really the revelation of who we are and what we have in Christ. That builds us up and that establishes us in the faith. There's a couple other ones, but those are the two main ones right there that, uh, that, the, that the New Testament, New Covenant believers should be established in in our hearts. See, if you're not established in these things right here, you're not established in the faith, not established in righteousness, not established in grace. Uh, another one was that our hearts need to be perfected in the love of God. That's 1 John chapter 4. If those three things are not, if we're not established in our heart in those three things, which is the faith, the enemy's going to come and steal our identity. He's going to throw us into an identity crisis. And of course, once he steals our identity, throws us into an identity crisis, he can keep us from enjoying the benefits of our inheritance and the benefits of the new creation in Christ Jesus. And see, God doesn't want us doing that. He wants us reflecting, bearing fruit, not just for ourselves, but so other people can see the fruit of what, uh, what a child of God, what an heir of God is supposed to look like. And see, of course, the enemy, if we're not established in these things, we're talking about established, that means you set it in concrete. You're not moved off of it. Bible talks about being immovable and established. That there are principles, there are realities of my identification in Christ that I should, I should be so well established in, so set in concrete in my own heart that there is no way the enemy is ever going to be able to talk me out of those things. I don't care what he says, what he does, what my life experience is, he is not going to steal my identity. He's not going to steal the reality that I'm right with God. He's not going to steal the grace out of my heart and the love of God, the God's unconditional love for me. He can't do it. He cannot do that. So notice right there that we're to be established in the faith. You know, there's a going along with that, there's a couple of scriptures over, first of all, in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And remember what I just said, that if, you're, if we're not established in these things in our heart, the enemy will come and steal our identity. That's really what he's after. You know, that's what he was after with the first Adam. He was out to steal his identity and of course once he stole his identity he stole everything he had his dominion his authority in the earth everything that he was supposed out of the first time was supposed to be walking in he tried to do this with jesus and it didn't work he said if you are the son of god see that's he's challenging his identity he's trying to subtly move in and steal his identity well jesus didn't fall for that he said it is written <laughs> in other words jesus was well established in the word of god concerning himself and so he wasn't going to be moved off of that. And so he resisted the enemy with the word of God. Well, we have the same thing at our disposal. But notice here in 1 Peter chapter 5, 
verse 8 and 9, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, notice he's an adversary, he's not a friend. He, the adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now notice he can't devour just anybody and everybody. He's seeking somebody vulnerable. Who is somebody who is vulnerable? Even a believer, he, he's talking to believers here, it would be somebody who's not established in who they are, what they have in Christ, and their new identity, identity in Christ. So he says, your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion. He's actually trying to portray himself to be something he's not. He's trying to bring fear into our life. He's trying to scare us and intimidate us with his roar. But when you understand who you are in Christ, that he's defeated, that Satan, Satan is defeated, disarmed, and dethroned, he has nothing on you. You're the one who Jesus has given dominion in the earth, that you have been lifted up far above all principalities, powers, mights, and dominions. Ephesians chapter 1, you know who you are and where you stand in your identification in Christ. Then he's not going to be able to intimidate you and scare you off by his roar. Now notice what it says in verse 9. It says, resist him. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Notice, establish, uh, we're to be established in the faith. This is how we resist the enemy. This doesn't mean we become devil conscious. In fact, uh, he's real. There's a reality of evil and Satan in the kingdom of darkness. But really, our focus needs to be on Jesus. And our, our focus needs to be on our identification in him and who we are in Christ. And see, once we're, we're in that, that we're focused correctly, we're going to be established in the faith, and we'll be able to resist him when he comes and tries to steal, kill, and destroy. When he tries to steal our identity, man, we're resisting him steadfast in the faith. And then it goes on to say, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. He doesn't have any new tricks. It's the same old stuff he pulls on everybody. And you know what? It's not going to work on us. It's going to roll off us like water off a duck's back because we are established in the faith. That means we are rooted and built up in our identification in Christ. And Satan is not going to be able to steal it out of us at all. We got it set in concrete. And we put up a front against him that he's going to mash his old stinking nose right up against. <laughs> and he's not going to be able to penetrate. We're, we know who we are like Jesus knew who he was by the word of the living God. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow as we pick up from here. If you'd like additional materials, you can go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.